Gold found in nature is never pure. It's always an alloy, and it varies tremendously. There is a quality difference between gold found in the United States. Gold that was first discovered in Dahlonega, Georgia, back in 1828, that was 98% gold and 2% silver. That's the highest ratio in the United States. During the Comstock load, 1859 to the present, some of the gold they found there was so rich in silver, they actually called it electrum, and it was half gold and half silver, although it looked like silver. It was very rich in gold. Around Coloma, the gold, it's 94% gold and 6% silver. On an average in the foothills of the Sierras, it's about 85%, but as I say, it can vary tremendously. As a merchant, you're buying people's gold in trade and you need to know all of this. And of course, there weren't assayers at first to determine how much gold was in these nuggets and in the quartz. Consequently, it was all devalued. By 1853-54, they knew that gold right around here was very rich, and so you would get a better value for your gold. In fact, one guy, Stephen Wing, in his journal said, I sold my gold in Coloma today and I got $18.75 an ounce. Now, if you had pure gold and you were at the Mint in San Francisco and you turned that in, they would give you $20.67 an ounce for your gold. The reason for that is gold, silver, platinum are weighed troy. Troy has 31 grams in an ounce and 12 ounces to a pound, and that's the biggest measurement in troy. That all comes from medieval times. In medieval times in Europe, every town had their own scales. There was no standardization of weights and measures. And consequently, there was a metals fair in the town of Troy in France. All sales had to be weighed on the scales of Troy, and it stuck for precious metals. Everything else is weighed 16 ounces to the pound, 28 grams per ounce, except for precious metals. 31 grams works out to 67 cents a gram. So $20.67 was what an ounce of gold was worth. Now a $20 gold coin has 30 grams of gold in it, not 31. It's not a complete true ounce of gold. It also has three grams of copper in it for hardness. Gold was used as money and you could take your gold to the mint and they would assay it for you and they would give you back a memorandum from the mint. It's a sheet of paper that shows how much gold you turned in, how pure that gold was, what the value of the gold is, if there was silver, platinum, or any other precious metal in there, and how much it was worth. You have a total, and then down in the corner, there's three little boxes. Uh, the first box says bullion, so you can check bullion. You just want purified metal back. Second box is coin. You have a payroll coming up, you're a mine owner, you need the coin to pay your people. And the third box is check. You don't need the money right now, so you're just gonna put it in the bank so you get a check from the government. If you do that, the government now has your gold and they can do what they want with it. And you've also increased the monetary supply in the United States by that amount. And that's why they would do that whole process for you for free. Some people were robbed of their gold. There's an interesting story from Bodhi. Bodhi was extremely remote, and at first they were bringing their gold to the men in San Francisco, and they would do that by Wells Fargo stage. The stage got robbed, but the robbers were caught because they couldn't process the gold that they found on the stagecoach. What I mean by that is gold shipped from Bodhi was gold and silver combined, and they shipped it that way for a reason. The Mint separated it for you for free, and very few people had the ability to separate gold from silver, so it was safe to ship that way. Those guys were caught by Pinkerton agents trying to sell this gold that no one would buy. I mean, what can you do with it? And of course, at the Mint, they would have taken that gold and silver, they would have flattened it out, 
and they would have poured nitric acid on it. The nitric acid will attack silver and turn it to silver nitrate, which is a liquid. They'll pour that off and put common table salt into the nitric acid, which will neutralize it. And so we've got silver over here and gold over here. They do the same with all the various other metals that they would find mixed with the gold. The chemistry of gold has been going on for thousands of years. And the reason for that is gold has been used as money for thousands of years. And when you're talking about money, people are thinking.